Vaughn's going to be so hammered by the time it gets this far, isn't he? <laughs> I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the straight whiskies now. So, so you can cut out shit that, that other people people don't like, right? Yeah, absolutely, Dan. We can. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't I'm think sure that many people knew about this video outside of England. You know what I mean? Because I was talking to someone out here earlier, and I said, "Oh, do you ever what see the first broadcast?" And they were like, "No idea what it is." Yeah. Yeah, but they probably say the same thing about Lost and Found, though, right? Nah, but they blueprint. People oh. knew what the blueprint videos were. You know what I mean? We did Went for the World, and before Went for the World, kind of Blueprint wasn't really like popular. It was like getting getting to be like, yeah, it's kind of cool, but like people kind of hated on it. You know what I mean? Because there was like New Deal distribution and stuff, and it was kind of a bit like you were either into like all American brands and you went for New Deal, or you were like, uh, you might be kind of like interested in like Unibomber or Blueprint or, or Death, maybe. But I think like, people kind of doubted for a little while before Wait for the World. Where it was like, yeah, those videos are kind of okay, I'm not really into it. And then Wait for the World came out and it kind of changed everything. And then after that, I feel like everyone was like, I want to, yeah, I'd fucking, I'll film, I'll film for some stuff, you know what I mean? So maybe it started filming other people. Uh, I think I probably thought it was weird that McGee would be like open to having other brands involved at the time, because it seemed like, I don't think it was really competitive, but there was a little bit of like, I don't know, not us and them, but it kind of felt like that at times, you know? And it was hard sometimes as the skaters because you were just like, fuck it, we just want to skate, you know what I mean? But there was all this sort of background noise. So I think when the idea came came around, I was a bit like, oh shit, he's going to get other people like Frank and people from other brands involved. I, I was kind of surprised, but it was like, yeah, sick. In hindsight, it's like a genius move. Like now, um, I don't know, you, you just feel like everyone's a bit more friendly kind of anything goes now so it's like in hindsight it's like yeah genius idea for that time and at first i think it was literally only dan had a vx in the whole of the uk i'm pretty sure that was a fact that only he had a vx um and like and that was the same when the gen you know the generator no one else was using the generator no one else had a death lens and no one else had a vx so yeah like you, you and basically that just kind of, so, you know, everyone kind of wanted to get on that really, like, like the public perception was completely different. Like you just felt like such a social pariah and, a, you know, like just, just the hate you came up against was unbelievable, just constantly. Things were terrible. So it was only like really sort of, you know, the, the people who really, really loved it and hung on through all the, through the terrible times in the nineties, you know? Uh, kind of had it all to yourself at least there wasn't a lot of people actually skating it was very niche no i think it was awesome uh, trying to, trying to think it was really just a series of bus and train trips between glasgow and london for me and skating with Cole and gary and toby in glasgow and skate lily take trips through to edinburgh that was kind of my experience of it that's all the whole ethos of like what we were doing with Waiting for the World End with first broadcast. Like say, you don't need to go all the way to the States or Vancouver in my in my case. You can, you know, let's look at what is the goal that we have just on our front end. Yeah. Jessica Mondon had a VX and he was probably like the only person in the country that had another VX for some weird reason. He had a VX and a death lens, like no one else really did. I think it was, and he filmed Shannon stuff so it was like, okay, let's just do something. No, well, it started with Shannon is, is how, first of all, and then getting back from SF with the Waiting for the World stuff. And then, um, I don't know how we sort of got on to doing it, Frank. Um, I guess it just made sense because he was living near me and I filmed him for years anyway. So it's just always just gathering footage of him naturally. Um, so I don't think it was any sort of big conversation about 
getting him in. It's just sort of a natural progression, I think. When I think about that timeline, I, I imagine first broadcast being so much later than waiting from the world, but it was actually only, what, a couple of years, Dan, or what? Something like, yeah, autumn 2000 and uh, 2000. And then, fin- when did we premiere? December 2001? December, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Include yeah. edit. So it was probably like only a year. It was probably definitely like 11, 11 or 10 or 11 months of filming. I think 10 months of filming and then edit, obviously, or and little bits of filming in, in between. Vaughn, when did you join? Because I feel like the catalyst almost for the video was Vaughn as well, because you were like, we had gone to, you know, like get you on the team and stuff like that after Unibot you know, were like. I think it was uh, literally a matter of weeks before. I think I got like, Paul called me, got a box. Yeah. got you to the boards and then came to London and just, yeah, just went straight mm. to it. I was oh, like, yeah, Shire I was called you? In 2000? It was Shire? No, it wasn't with Shire, was it? Shire. It wasn't with me, yeah. Come huh? on. I yeah, know, it it's so gnarly because I was actually like sat with Toddy in my living room in Worcester actually watching, like waiting for the world. And Shire, <laughs> and Shire called me. Right. I think in waiting for the world, I was like, still a bit of a grom that was lucky enough to be on blueprint so it was like miniature prove yourself trying to do impressive stuff but like you don't really know what you're doing and then first broadcast more like all oh, right i get this i feel more confident now i kind of understand and also back then it seemed that when we finished a video we would just immediately start another video yeah. i mean you just filmed didn't you? like we never yeah, stopped filming. you know it was just like that's what that's what you did you there was no social media, so you just, you know, you just went, oh, we're done with that. Now let's start filming some new <laughs> stuff for the next right. video, whatever that may be. There wasn't really that much coverage coming out of the UK, you know, like Flip kind of been here and done their thing. But like, I feel like they kind of had to go to America to get their, to get their real, real recognition. You know what I mean? And what we were, we were trying to do with Blueprint was be like, oh, you can skate here, you can live here. You can, you know, basically kind of like have your whole career here and be recognised or, you know, kind of have its own industry. You know, especially the first broadcast, that was the idea that there was a bit of an industry here, like very small, basic industry made up at the time of only like, you know, three to four different companies. And uh, first broadcast was like, okay, here's the first kind of proper, um, you know, broadcast of kind of British talent that included other other companies, you know, other other riders from other companies, British companies. Dan was buzzed on the generator light. Oh, yeah, he oh. was. Is that <laughs> even a thing anymore, generators? Is all about the lights, isn't it? For about, Mate, I think for about a year. Dude, you see what people are filming on. Of course they're not using generators. Not even using, not even using proper cameras, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. I went to uh, New York to get those lights. In Mac, uh, here we go. Omar. Omar. Vaughn that's, left. Leo. That's, actually, that's actually crazy to put the Unibomber logo first in in, uh, in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a statement at the time, right, McGee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Bromsgrove, no? Bromsgrove, uh, cheers. Tape! Cassettes, wow. Cassette, yeah. There he is. Team organic. <laughs> Interesting going on. Whoa. Oh. That was like switch oh, fiber over the yeah. top. Yeah. Right. Ali. Oh, big yeah. shout out there, mate. Uh, big shout out, Billabong. What's a hat you got on, dude? I don't know, man. Terrible. Terrible. I like it. There's the Woodyard. That's Woodyard, mate. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, it's Buzz Martin. Shut the store because I had a Oh, my Jensen. He, uh, just young. Right. We would put a bump to any fucking thing in that. Yeah, this is the thing. Oh, oh, that was <laughs> rough, though. Ready. Oh, fuck. Okay. Look at that. What was he doing? Yes. I- Random, that's quite it. That's Skate Worthy. Oh, I remember that. Are you at the premiere, Vaughn? Yeah. Yeah. 
I wasn't. I ain't, I ain't got it. You don't know why though, right? I, I have no idea. Man, I remember, man, I remember man, man, Manzuri was at the Premier. Yeah. Manzuri, Mike Manzuri was at the Premier. That's a random, like, out of all the get, all, all of the people in the cinema, it's like, well, Manzuri's here, random. Because at that point, it's really in the US. And the mini cam on the helmet. That was yeah. so mad. Was that out having an indie truck or something, Dan? Did you do that? Yeah, I, but uh, looking back on it, it was like... Base plate or something. That was way ahead of, ahead of its time, innit? Because, like, no GoPro. It was literally when I was... Yeah. Uh, handy Sony handy cam with a deaf mini a baby deaf lens and then a yeah. kimping nut with bushings and stuff on it. So it had suspension. It was pretty mentally nice. it stayed on. Yeah. Oh, this, this, this statue's actually moved. The, the, that's a Pelosi uh, sculpture. That that's actually been moved now. They have it. They have really it? nice stained stained uh, blueprint jeans. Look at those jeans. <laughs> Remember you hit your head on that and you went well, funny. I don't really go over I don't really go over the the cut the, the milk crate there. But mate, we're spoiling it for you. Can't, yeah, Frank, you can't you can't mate. Right, mate, it's funny. There's a lot of those B boards oh, in here, um, mate. Nah, I had my head that day. <clears throat> we should have the light. Fucking nod to Kalis in those traps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you had to have them. Oh yeah, I wanted to bring up this line, like, did you look back at it and think, why did I just turn around? You do like a weird turn around here in the middle. Skips around. Yeah, I know. Oh, that, that's an Ipswich, no? I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, Ipswich College. Uh, yeah, we jumped up there and that's all we got, skate that fucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Look at Denim up there. That's cool, Denim. Cool, Denim. Uh, Bewitched, isn't it? Is that the band, Bewitched, that used to run Denim? Bewitched. That's Ipswich. Oh, yeah. oh, two, two front nose in a row, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that, that's good, eh? Mm. Hey, two, two, two reels. Is that other front nose Birmingham born? <clears throat> yeah, this is Bram, yeah. No, yeah. run it. Darling. This is Del Center. This is like, this is when, one, when we switched to those like. fucking, those uh, VX2000 lenses. Yeah. I like, feel like that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they weren't good. This was first part of the one, so. Oh, oh that still, line is just kind of so like. I think I, I really like this one. I think I think it's my I think it's my favourite to be honest, just because I think it's quite short and condensed, and there's a lot of like like Dan and Wanden's like trick selection is really good. Although there's a few double ups on tricks, I was just looking at that now, but I feel like. I just feel like it, it, it's tight. I think I, when I look back on that time, I like skating was was feeling good to me at that time. So it was not like a like lost and found was like a struggle for me. Uh, so I, and it was a longer process, but I feel like this one just kind of came quite quite fluid. It was not I'm not saying easy, but it was just so that's why I have I have good memories of it. And it was just a short time span. It was just like a fun crew, like a small small crew that was doing it and Vaughn had come on board and there was new energy there you know we went to Barcelona and kicked it off then so I've got I've got good memories of of that that video specifically it's a little blurry to be honest about this <laughs> period of my life if I'm completely honest <laughs> early 2000s and no, I, 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 Spain, I knew we moved to Spain early 2000s Shire you got some roll-ups what the this fuck have you got on there mate? On this well, roll -ups, mate. And I don't know why that ramp's there. Let's talk about that ramp. Photoshopped it out. I fucking hated this spot. The footage of like Kenny in that in uh, Magpo, right? He does that lining yeah, while he's over the thing on yeah, the track. Yeah, that's true. You would come out to film me in Barcelona then. Yeah, that's the second time. I took Peggy Five off the drop day one, and I just twisted my ankle, and then I didn't film. The ankle brace too. Your yeah, your man. ankle was toast then, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely toast because you have one of those. It's good off couplet. That's solid, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I don't think A. McGee wanted me to have a part in this video anyway. And B. I was, <laughs> well, he wasn't in a space, in a headspace to do it at that time. I almost feel like some of the footage in it is actually stuff that wasn't even used in the video before. So, like that line at. Uh, mm. Almost like throwaway, like the line at uh, <laughs> nah, that like you know, line of King is just shit. You know what I mean? It's just oh, like, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Yes, Louis. Right. Chelmsford? No, not Chelmsford. No. What's it called? Drumfield. Drumfield, yeah. Stop. Well, that's dope. Nothing you did. Stop, yeah. Oh, it's, come it's crazy, on. crazy that that's like a fucking four star rail, but it's actually pretty sick. Fast forward to sit. Skip through. <laughs> no. I mean, actually, to give him yeah. his moment, you know what I'm to give him his respect, though. He, oh, oh, it's actually the bats on Ollie Flips and wait for the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they, 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 this is good, though. This is sick. Mm. Somebody, yeah. back, somebody bats on Ollie Flips, that Benny bats on Ollie Flips in the new edit recently. Yeah, I know. So you know he's going to bring that up. Oh, he has already, don't worry. Oh, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> I, mean, he's got, I mean, he's got good style, I mean. Fucking hell, man. Damn! Yeah, fucking good, that back's that's up. Heavy. Amazing. I mean, that's back fucking, back. that's what's amazing. Peplo! Oh, mate, I can't believe you did that. Boom! Oh, yeah. Can't believe that. Look how perfect. Dude. That's the same spot. He was super consistent right there. And Andres. Andres, top off, allowed? <laughs> but I was just thinking about going to his mother's house when we were in Ecuador. No, that was his step was. Oh, I'll see, I remember that. Step. Yeah. Yeah, it was insane. She's on my Instagram. They brought that tray of cigarettes around for us to uh, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Hey. That was bizarre. She's on my Instagram, mate. She's like... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she's like a gnarly oh. yoga, yoga bunny or something. <laughs> yoga bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gnarly. <laughs> Yeah. Was that his trick? Is that stinking mm -hmm. switch council idea? Yeah, it's French. French. I think it's that one. What? That was good. Yeah. That, was, that was on the Ben oh, Jones. I was there at night. That was great. Has French always been good? Per Percy in the background shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? The costumes. Oh, Don. Let's just celebrate those costumes. Yeah, definitely. Oh. That was so that, cool. That reel was so yeah. sick. Yeah. Jesus, man, that roll is banging, isn't it? Is yeah. that still, surely that's still there. Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Dang. You saw the blueprint tape there? <laughs> oh, God, everywhere. Bolo, Bolo. On his board, too. Bolo, tripping out. Yeah, cause, you know why he's got tape on his board? Because it's a flip board, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh sure. maybe we went for that. Oh, it's the need time. <laughs> He wouldn't yeah. skate any other boards except Bopped the flip them out. <laughs> he, he, he had to have an inch gap in the tail, and yeah. that's why that was that's what, that's what, that's why we got those investigations made on that wood because he had to, he, yeah, so he could have something to skate. Oh. <laughs> he's still not complaining about them, though. Yeah, but then he still said oh. no, they're not the same. Oh, yeah. fucking out. Yeah, he said, oh no, they're not the same. They're literally the same shape. Chose the same shape, and he said. I guess we all rode oh, adventure at this point, except for more. I don't remember that one. I remember him doing switch. Oh, damn. Yeah. That. Wow. So much good form, like the way Farmer skated. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. so is... good. So good. Oh, yeah, I went, on that I went on that video radio circuit tour. Whenever that, so whenever that was, I came back from that, stayed at Oliver Barton's. I was like, oh, I'm not going to go and stay at Dan's now because I'm about to quit. So I'll go and stay at Oliver's and I'll phone Dan up. I can't remember. That's all I remember. I remember staying at Oliver's when he was living in that um, loft sort of thing in Hackney and calling up because, yeah, Jamie had made an offer to ride for zero. And it was like, oh, you, you know, he was like, oh, you know, I've been talking to you for a year. You want to ride for zero or not? We need to kind of make a decision. So I was like, oh, I guess so then. But it's a tough decision to make because we all come up together, you know, but how far through filming first broadcast we were we, we must have gone to vancouver already before that we must have i must have been hanging around london a fair bit staying at shires if i think about it. there was fairfield's clips in there i think that were filmed after waiting for the world so we'll see that in a minute i think that's still circa shoes there maybe here's vancouver it's up somewhere up near the pne center Croydon, decent kickflip. I like those sessions that we had after waiting for the world at Fairfield. That's Vancouver. We're jumping between Vancouver, like Vancouver, that's Port Coat, Portland Skate Park. And then we're in Barcelona at night. I mean, we would talk all the time and sort of brainstorm and philosophize about what it means to be a UK brand versus not. You know, we would always talk about that. That would always be part of the conversation, but. 
Ken was the person putting together like the visual aesthetic and driving the vision. Trying to, trying, to, trying to hype you up, Dan. Trying to hype you up. That's Vancouver. That's still a blueprint board. There's a lip slide maybe here, probably. Still a circus sticker on the board there. Oh, the old filming board trick. Yeah. God, I hate that I foot drag there. Terrible. And I hate that I put my hands down there. And I always thought that this stuff was just kind of whatever. Yeah, 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 you see how it pieces together. And we would sit, like, and look at real, look at edits and mess with stuff and think about tracks and all that together. As much as we were together, I mean, it'd be a couple of weeks couch surfing at Cawdor here and there. I think it's the best way to put something together as a team. So you see everyone's at and share everyone's progress and hype each other up. It's the, way, it's the way I've always operated and everything from like a Scottish scene video, Alex Craig and I put together that him and Bam video or Blueprint stuff or the Zero stuff we would go to the office and sit in the editing room and look where we're all at. There it is. Get the arms down on that. Probably did that on purpose to be funny. That's it. Jimmy, I don't think we had footage. I think he actually hit us up or got in contact somehow. It was like, oh, I want to film some stuff, you know, in a typical Jimmy way. And I was always really into Jimmy because he had an amazing photograph in, I think it might be in the skateboard magazine, Hurricane in the Back Wall of Living, whether, whether he fucking made it or not, I don't know. But like, I used to have that poster on my bedroom wall, like behind my headboard in my bed, it was pretty sick. He was like putting stuff about, just doing kind of mental stuff. And uh, I think he, heard that we were filming and just kind of wanted to be involved, you know? Yeah. I think like, you would, I already knew Frank Stevens from Unibomb videos and thought he was a fucking legend, so I was over the moon. I thought it was really good to like get all these other interesting people in the video, so... Um, I was excited because I know he's a fucking mosher and he's going to just like ollie off a roof or something. So I was kind of <laughs> forward to seeing what, what him and Monica are up to. Like, like I said, he lit... He lived just around the corner from me, so it's really, really good. Like any time I wasn't away filming, I was back back in Ipswich. You know, we could just go out and, as we've always done for the last however many years at that point, just to get stuff. And he's always coming round with ideas, with a big list. You know, I've been filming him for God knows how long by that point, so I, I sort of know how Frank <laughs> Frank works. There's definitely some bent, some battles where he'd go absolutely mad. Fucking good, though, but I guess, uh... I mean, I probably haven't seen Frank for about 15 years or something. <laughs> what a spot. Yeah, I went to Ipswich quite a bit. When I say quite a bit, enough to just be like, I'm fucking over it. Um, <laughs> enough. <laughs> I remember, you know when someone's like got their hometown, they're like, oh, there's loads of spots, and get them, and like, okay, then where are the spots? And they'll be like, there's this, this, this like, step up leg, and you're like, that's fucking shit. And then it'd be like, like, that's impossible to skate. It was like what, so gnarly to skate that it, like everything has a crack before it, like that Frank skates, like every set of stairs that yeah. you just see fish like angle down below. He's had to actually like pop the backside flip a meter before the top of the stairs because there's like 12 cracks just before the lift, you know? Hey, how the fuck did I get in? A, a wooden foil, Frank? Oh. <laughs> I did wonder that. How did I get look in there? Look at the launch on that though. Look, I know. Look, right. Pop up. I think Jensen's got a skateboard clip in this video too, McGee, just, just, just to say that out loud as well. I was on that session, I was trying to think, like, did we go on any sessions and skate with Frank? Not that much at all, but no, I think that one where he does the switch box on it, I think that was it. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Frank would be uh, ahead of the time with the, the, the file instead of the rubber, can he? Yeah. Look at that, it's so rough. Yeah. It's <laughs> like a crack before the drop. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one is that one of the in the background, Mom? Yeah, sure is. Yes. We're Ooh. flying over. Um, that's a good staple of first order kickers. Hey. Like wooden kickers, no? Mate. Yeah, it's it's a lot of them. Whoa, heavy. That is insane. Hey, nice. Fucking gnarly, oh, nice. that one. Yeah. That's, that's fucking up. That's. Oh, that's that, might, that must still be there, no? That? Uh, nah. Did, did, you, did you film that one then, that on eel? Did I? Oh, I did. He just done it ridiculously quickly. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple of goes straight over. Oh, you got a problem with the filming, Dan? Again? <laughs> no, 
<laughs> no, I'm just going to so anyway. go, go back. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess Vaughn's knowledge, <laughs> facts and knowledge is going to come up. Uh, oh, here we go. Definitely. going to be a bone of contention. The geek can't wait for that moment. You were like 17 or something because I remember I was but, like, uh, I'm 37 now. And if it's a 20 year anniversary, that makes me 17. Yeah. yeah. I remember because you still hadn't had a beer or anything. I don't really remember thinking about it other than just being excited by all of the energy that was in the air at the time because there was this real thing of like, it's like Bournemouth said, it was snowy and everyone was around doing stuff. So it felt like that was the height of the British kind of skate scene and it felt exciting. Human shit. Yeah. Shit, Look at this. Back in the day when we all skated a 7.5. Yeah. yeah. Oh, spread. All the balls are too skinny for me when I go on, I remember. What, what, look at this, what are those shoes, Nick? I just remember spray painting what Reynolds was supposed to be. You did it. Reynolds. I feel like with videos you sort of hit spots and there's like a kind of like a fever for certain spots where everyone gets hyped on them and skates and for like chunks of time and then moves on. So I never felt like a lot of those spots were spots you gravitated towards to film and like a lot of that stuff was as well was like getting that bike rack out of that um, thing and putting the like they were like add-ons to make stuff happen such a buzz around that and there was no problems with getting ramps up to stuff and that was like a sort of like I said about like being a fever it kind of what's kind of cool about that and I have no regrets about all that ramp stuff because it's kind of amazing to see how much that was like the meaning of the time Back then, marks it so strongly for me. No, who started uh, it? Shannon started that, didn't he? Yeah, me and Shannon did it once where we used the skate key to lift the thing up. Yeah. And then it became like, oh my god, let, let's look from everywhere. Yeah. It was pretty fun. I remember snapping my house key in one of those. That was so fucking. <laughs> was this filmed by like you, Mondon, or, or Dan? Like, how, how much of. Both shared. Your... Yeah, shared, I guess. I stayed at Nick's house quite a bit, I remember. Right. You enjoy a bit? Sandwich up to. A what? Did you enjoy a big sandwich up to? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cup of tea, nice. Oh. Good service. I mean, I, I, from a young age, I've had problems, and it just, as I got older, and the fact they still existed meant that they felt more like I was insane. Whereas when you're younger, you can get away with being like, oh, I'm a bit worried. And like, when you get older, and you're still suffering from those, like, things. Like, if one's house is in the front board, I couldn't sleep from the tweaking. Like if you're 37, you're like, I want to go, I want to go on a skate trip, but can my mum come or something? Then you know you've got a problem. Um, was when you're like 17, I remember I went to Barcelona and my mum and dad came on a trip and I sort of pretended to disguise it. Like, well, we're going on holiday there anyway. But I was like, please, could you come? Because I'm so prang of like having panic attacks and stuff. And then because they came, it made me like have a way better trip. Well, is that bombs going? Yeah, it's in my head. It's in Better Jensen outside London. I like this line because this is like a line when Nick started yeah. to get like a, a bit more of an adult style. Kind of tell. There's a stumble. That board is so sick. That like Vaughn graphic. The, yeah. The, the thin yeah, I'd have a few of them. Fly, such a sick board. Yeah. What an outfit. Nick, there. Nick what t shirt is that green one you own? That's the hot tuna one I was saying. I can remember we did a blue tour and I just had to leave. I would have never left the thing, but it was like mm. after I just, I think I'd gone to like a house party recently with Vaughn and uh, I had like a, <laughs> I had my first YT or whatever. Yeah. But it was a thing like when. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's crazy. fucking heroin sheet guy takes you, takes you off track. Yeah, yeah, but because I, because I had that <laughs> YT, because I had a YT, I thought like that's when my the anxiety that I have now started because I can remember for the first time ever being like what the fuck am I going to do after screen like like tweet like tweaking about it like thinking yeah, about yeah. it and then like every now and again that kind of rear its head and like on that tour you know obviously I think Grove was winding me up something it was just like can't do what this. Tour this huh what tour was this the long belong to nah I did go on a belong tour but I left early yeah, on one. don't belong just leave I can't remember there was one <laughs> yeah, like, I just didn't go on it, I just didn't go on it. And I remember sent Grove home early from one as well. That's because, you know, in Lost and Found... That was the long tour, though. Was it? I can't remember. I left one. And maybe I'm getting them confused, but I can remember that's 
what, what Nick's talking about when you start analysing something. Yeah, you're over. You just you go down a rabbit hole, and it's just like yeah, no. that, was, that was that was a reason. For, that was a reason why I had to fucking bounce out, just because I'd start yeah. thinking. I'd start thinking, oh, I can't do this for a kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey ho. You know what I mean? That's me. But uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Exactly. We're all still here. Doing the exactly. same. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, kind of doing the same. Doing my skateboarding. You know what I mean? Skateboarding. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety-eight or ninety-nine. I went to the US for three weeks but then yeah I, di- I didn't stay for three weeks I I stayed for 18 months so I stayed there for too long I mean I was I think I was 17 when I went to America I had my 18th birthday there I think and like Rune took us all out to Claim Jumper I don't know if you know that restaurant um, and I think I was 18 I was you know I was young and yeah we were doing there's a lot of drinking a lot of like just fucking yeah living it up but i was at the time in america i was like i was anxious and i was probably depressed at the time but obviously i didn't know that because i was so so young you don't really know what's going on so that's where i fucked my knee in america as well so i was like i was in i was in a bad bad shape when i got back from america so yeah first broadcast i think i was like i just want to be i just want to be at home and you know just have some normality with people that I'd sort of been around you know since I was young um so I didn't I didn't, I just remember not traveling much just remember like yeah literally finding spots creating spots out of like I'd go around like we used to skate a Safeway car park and I remember just walking through there on my way home and seeing like the shoe box you know the recycled shoe box and I saw the edge of it and I thought right you could skate that you just need to build a kicker to it and there was like loads of just crap spots like that but you I thought right you could do you know like the wood yard was another one which was just like a pretty bad spot see the wood yard looks good I do like the fact that Bates are skating a load of shit that like other kids could find that same shit and skate it if they watch this one I remember Chess telling me you need to fucking go to America you need to do this I remember Shipman telling me you need to come to America we'll get you on this we'll do this and Blueprint was like the opposite of that He is on fire on his shoes though. It's the same shoes he's doing when he does a switch one eight. That's really a thing. Oh like you can tell he's just got it. he's got it. Look at that! Oh. So good. Only time I shaved my head though. For a five pound five pound bet with Shire. You know, I know London's amazing for skating, but there's like so much of what happened with Blueprint and the history of Blueprint wouldn't have happened if everyone had just, just like stayed in London. You, know, like, you wouldn't have had Scott Palmer, you wouldn't have had like a bunch of spots that he skated that are probably people's favourite clips. So I think that was one of the hardest things I did. My nose burns, it's quite high. But... Is that, so where's that? Is that Man's Spunk? Is that, that Man's Spunk? Yeah, that, yeah, it is, yeah. So yeah, it was it was kind of like, well, this is what you do. You grow up skating, you know what I mean. You just fucking you, you learn from a young age that you know you can make stuff. You can. You, I, I remember as a kid trying to fucking build a mini ramp. It's like you just want to create what you see in videos. Or I mean, I think that's the only time I've ever done kick the boards. But would you? I don't think I've done it ever since. Yeah. I like that transvolve yeah. building there, trying to get the Rick Howard chain thing going. French Fred, Frank. I mean, it's sick. This is when Brady kind of just got, dis- not discovered, but he was coming to Sheffield quite a lot this time. I've got a feeling that trip is when uh, September the 11th happened. Like, yeah, we were driving I to remember that. We were down Dev Green, weren't we? When the plane took the World Trade Center. And that was, that was the trip. That was the same time. So that would have been September 12th, 2001. God, it's so cold that night. Cold. So cold that night. I remember that night exactly. It was freezing. This is a weird shit. Like, freaky, and then this shit drives in us. This is a fucking fakey varial flip. You just do it like that. That's how it works. Who's going to talk over this bit here? I think me and Mondon shot a lot of Snowy stuff because he was... I mean, Snowy was basically like a heavy lurker. He, moved he was always there, wasn't he? 
Well, because he moved, he just invited himself to live at our house. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we paid. Oh we, yeah, we were saying it. Yeah, we. And Joey, like Joey and Snowy, literally like somehow ended up living at our house, and we ended up paying like all their fucking bills and shit for, all, <laughs> for the whole of that video. Because Toddy as well lived there for a little while as well. They all moved to London basically because of like me and Massey, primarily Massey, because me and Massey, we we did we didn't free food and they live off Starbucks um, remnants and stuff, wouldn't they? And get like odd jobs in warehouses, like the Maha Ishii warehouse, they got they worked in for a bit and got fired from them. Like it was this warehouse where you were you were allowed to smoke weed while you worked and they still got right. fucking fired from it. By <laughs> West London no? Greenford. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'd go out and it would be everybody. Mm. Like it'll be, it'll be all of us. Like then it'll be snowy, and then it was like Toddy would be around, and then like sometimes you know, yeah, you know, You'd naturally get it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, there we go. He is. This is he incredible. Like Boot cuts. Boot cuts. Remember, get your cheapest pint, Ollie Todd. Remember, um, <laughs> Chess, a bit boot cut now, wouldn't he? Yes. So this is like deep two oh, hours time, huh? Yeah, it was. Mm. It was. Wow. Oh, that's, that's good. That's, that's, really that's cool. not that's not easy, that. That's a bit easier. Where's that? He didn't enjoy oh, that, that though, did he? I remember him being so pissed off about that. Oh, it's oh, it's there's a hurricane right here, and I was like, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. cool. It's such a good line, huh? Yeah. yeah. And he never jumps. He's scared in a different way. He's scared in like a little yeah. spot. Oh, man. Oh, he's so good in this. There he is. Let's go. Jumping Be creative. <laughs> there he is. Looking back on this, it's pretty crazy that we literally made a video for Foz. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're like with, 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 our, with our budget. Like, there you go, Foz, there's a video. He saw the premiere out for us, though, didn't he? Did he? It, he's the one that hooked it up originally. Yeah, I remember oh, talking fair, about it. Fair play, then. Nice for a tight bass to do something for people, isn't it? Yeah. Dude, this this dude's style is like fucking timeless, isn't it? Yeah. Like, this, like, you know what I mean? Like, this could be now, really, couldn't it? But what we've got to realise is Toby is like probably one of the most OG like London people because he's born in like, you know, London suburbs. One of the first people I met and was inspired by a skater yeah. kid, like being a but, grommet, like going, yeah. oh my god, that, that's the coolest yeah, dude ever. Yeah, right? That's where he's from. Yeah, so he's, he was like Harrow local, and then it changed to South Bank, and he was like, he was like the little kid at South Bank, that, but was down mm. with like the main people like Clive and stuff. So, you know, he's like the most legit dude. Uh, well, anyone that's really in that video, you know, London wise, Pop Benjo. He also had really like double jointed collarbones and they used to pop out all the time and he, or something. And he used to just be like, fuck's sake, man, I can't like skate anymore like yeah, it, yeah. It, like this. I need to get sort my shit out. It was actually just like unbearable for him. Uh, and, he had, and he had ankle problems too, that's why. And he had ankle problems, yeah, it was just like. Kind of... It's switching, Nolly. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Never happy when he was doing any of it though. <laughs> he does that fast on all the hill for like three goes, I swear he does. Oh, his trousers are just right. too good. This bit is the best. Love this shit. I, lo I love it when this happened, when this, when Mondo filmed this, I was literally like, mate, those fucking trousers. <laughs> but, like, but like now, now, those trousers are flying, you know what I mean? Like those trousers are like, fine, wear those trousers, you know what I mean? Oh my god, this is so good. Yeah. Oh, that is insane. That that is insane. insane. Um, why he catches it? And it's, it's insane that like he never had, he would have to ride second hand boards. You know what I mean? He didn't, like, he didn't, he didn't want a new board anyway, did he? It's mad, it's mad, it's oh, mad. He almost rode like switch manual down the bottom of the bank. Yeah. yeah. Landing, right? It's crazy. Mm. I think Monden kicked it off, but he got he got that line of Joe boys wearing the crazy trousers. And it's like, yeah, it's anything you could get of him, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah mystical, must... you know. <laughs> And once Monda got that, it's like, let's do this. But he wanted to feel more, didn't he? Ben Job did, but it's just so, that's just, yeah. Yeah, you're I'm never going to, I mean. Trying to sort of get together and do it was. Yeah, yeah, it's like trying to catch, it's like a magic moment, isn't it? It's like, yeah. I mean, looking back on it now, yeah, yeah. If I'd have known, I'd be like, yeah, let's just fucking just kidnap this dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> You like, know, what, I might actually have to go to bed because I've got up so early yesterday. I feel fucked. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah. 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 Born, I feel bad because I'm missing your section, mate. That's rude, Simon. Oh, I'm leaving Miss Ali Ken's apartment. I'll be staying in your house in the new year, mate. I'll see you soon.
See you soon. Thanks so much Thanks for having me, guys. That's on, Nick. Love you all. Cheers, Nick. Bye. Take care. Maybe take the bit out when I talk about my pubes or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love you all, man. Love all right. you, mate. Same to you, mate. Same, Same to you. I can't even remember how to start. Like, how how did it? You obsessed with this at the time, I mean, it can be yeah, but so did you know? Or you can be. Yeah, but do you know? McGee, you I, filmed this whole part, McGee. Yeah, but do you know why I was well into it? Cause one, because like no one had, obviously, I mean, Ken, kind of like does the same tricks in every part, but I don't think anyone had really filmed it properly yet. But the, 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 uh, was that? Ali was like so easy. You know, so, yeah, he was. So but I was well into it because he was well up for it and he'd like be like, I'll, if I nail this bit of wood on the ramp, you can stand on it and he'd be like, have ideas. But also like my mum and dad lived 20 minutes down the road so I could go and film Ali and stay over and like hang out with my mum and dad. And that was why I was kind of vibing on it. You know what I mean? We went for dinner around there once afterwards. Did we? Yeah, your mum cooked, yeah. Yeah, mum. Right. Yeah. But I remember editing it and then I was like, I can't remember, I had the, obviously it dry, didn't it? You know, because it's all burnt ramp, it's all one burnt ramp. And then I like, yeah, just thought, it's so. yeah, yeah, but then I thought about making all the colours changing and it kind of like brought it to life, you know what I mean? Is this the first time you filmed like Burt's game? First and only, I think. Well, that's wild, that trick. Yeah. yeah. Is that like a dog piss, like 360? Is that what they used to call yeah. that trick, like dog piss? Yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, it's fucking crazy though, isn't it? What he does can do. Yeah, mental. He was hyped on that. I remember showing him the foot. I showed him the footage back. Damn, in the look at that. I, show, I showed him the footage back on the radio, and he was fucking hyped on it. Yeah, it's such a good style, Alex. Yeah, definitely. Dude, this is sick as well. Big old rail, that. Oh. Solid. Infamous. Infamous. I big that. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Belly. Belly. Yeah. yeah. This, this might be for all those, you know, big Blueprint fans out there. <laughs> there isn't any anymore. Uh, did you who draw the spray heart? Oh, fuck. McGee, you tell me. Uh, no. Because I, I, I thought that you drew it and then McGee, like, fuck with it. No. Uh, spray well, I did heart. something very similar to it. He did it? something similar. So when you use that graphic, I think I gave you more images. So maybe it was just, yeah, I mean, from my point of view, I think I'd definitely drawn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Vaughn, Vaughn did the artwork thing, but then we did a hooded sweatshirt and I said, Vaughn, give me the fucking, oh, give me a heart, and I put it in the heart, but then I added on a drip to that one, but it was a different kind of heart. It was on the hooded zip-up t-shirt. It's like, it's a different kind of heart. And then that, the belong heart, the dripping heart, is, a, is like a fucking bubbly version. So I guess it's a certain evolution of it, isn't it? That's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You know, Mark Chapman was just, I don't know, such a pro pro, like he's just so professional all around, you know, like consistency and like his attitude and just everything. He was just like a proper professional, you know. Like trying to find things to skate where we are. It was just ridiculous. I think that's my niche, is just staying terrible, terrible stuff that no one else was getting. The one with the 50-50 backside and 80, that was with people there, because I remember feeling terrible that everyone was having to wait. Because you're trying to get the absolute best thing you can possibly get, and because it feels like a big thing, because it was, it did feel like a big thing. It was a big UK company. You're kind of like reaching for the stars with everything. So the Harrow Rail, as far as I remember, I don't remember being uh, warming up or anything. It would have been generator straight on, car legs, brand new board. It's so really pressurized, like everyone's got in the van and driven all the way to this rail and no one else there. So it was all on me. Some random bloke was walking past and just 
started watching me do it and like he was just so stoked and it was just you know it's just nothing bad about it just like a really good atmosphere and so I look at that and that's like a good memory and then yeah like I say there's other bits that are like negative memories you know and that was the negative part of it and uh, for me the whole experience especially with the first broadcast was because it sort of got into that the generator thing I think a lot of people feel like that it all felt very uh, pre-planned and staged and pressurized so it had loads of, it had the good side of it which is like the hype and everyone got excited you know and tried hard because you know you got the lights on and you've got limited I suppose time so everyone would get on with it so it had the good aspects to it but it had a lot of negatives to it as well and the way I'd feel comfortable filming the way I always feel comfortable filming the way I'm most productive is when I just go through a city or something with one other skater who also films and then we film each other do tricks and we have no plan and we just see stuff and then we just do it and there's no pressure no one's waiting no one's bored and that's when it just works perfectly for me like now I'm just like really like I, I just I absolutely love skateboarding now and I rack up loads of footage and like enjoy and I actually enjoy filming like I don't get stressed I enjoy filming like it is born spot now isn't it yep the kids gonna be in school because of one that's the that was the uh, that's the uh, Vancouver trip we heard. There's our blue tape again. <laughs> oh, fucking get it, mate. <laughs> didn't hurt at all, man. Yes, big. Uh... You didn't you win a, an award for that slam? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, got best slam of the year. I guess I'd gone to America and that uh, and and come back and got the cover of a magazine in the states and i just kind of just felt like everything was kind of stagnant so i was like what do i do like do i do i stay with unabomber and like be part of that or do i just move on and i kind of just quit and then yeah like like i mentioned earlier out of the blue like paul, paul hit me up one day and it, it it wasn't much long after i saw waiting for the world and i just saw what everybody was doing at the time and i was just so hyped so I was just watching Waiting for the World and going skating every day and just thinking like, I'm just going to move on and then and, and, and go to college and whatever. And then yeah, Paul, Paul hit me up and then I instantly just kind of took my first doll, <laughs> took my first doll check I could afford and go to London and just, get on and, and just go filming. For me, it was like such a weird, I don't know, it was a weird time because yeah, I guess I didn't ever expected I would write for Blueprint actually to be honest so when I did and I got the opportunity to, to work on this I guess I was just on a charge. Very good. Why you Love that, go to Matt get a barrier. <laughs> I was clearly influenced by everybody you know what I mean like yeah I was you know a Unibomber I was always hanging out with Frank and those guys and, 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 and Frank especially, but um, yeah, it was just rad to have a new bunch of people to be around and, and, and skate with. I don't know, like I didn't know Colin, I didn't know Paul, like I couldn't really like, I'd see their skateboarding videos and it, sometimes at Radlands or whatever, so it was rad to see, like, you know, I don't know, it was just great to be part of something new and seeing these guys skate, I don't know, completely huh? different to what I've been used to. <laughs> hey, they didn't have like, this is definitely your oh, Jonestown, uh, Jonestown Massacre uh, stage, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Your Ant Ant Anton haircut. That's good, that, isn't it? This was first, that was the first day when I was the most. That's the first time I went to come with you. Oh, oh yeah, it's, I think I remember that now. This is like down the road from my house. Yeah, <laughs> this some of those girls. Oh, right. But I remember Helicar was went to Premier and he's like generally stoked on the video. I mean he said that made a point of coming out to me after the Premier and like being like that was fucking sick generally. Yeah generally stoked on it. Yeah and I don't think there was ever a, a side to side, I just think it was two completely different narratives on yeah. on a way of looking at a UK skate brand at the time, you know, and you you look at it now now compared to then it was it was so different, you know, it was a lot more DIY, and we all have to work for it in a different way. It's like Vaughan's training center, Pitchcroft. Wow. 
That was some ahead of its time, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, like, the way you do that, yeah. I'm I think well, I think it's Gurdy, because Gurdy was like, I thought that. Oh, Monden. Where's the fish eye? There we go. The ultimate question. There was never a fish eye. Fucking hell, look at that. What a fucking spot. That was like, that, 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 and now, that shit was like, just... I'm gonna say it's not... Good as you could possibly do that trick, let's be honest, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like one of the best in the best ever done. It's literally, like, one of the greatest ones of all time, I think. Like, that is such a good trick. That's super <laughs> 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 That's a hat. Oh, no. Oh, 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 my. <laughs> pencil. That was pencil. That's so pencil. You've got to talk about the backside nolly flip, though, Vaughn. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it. Everyone wants, you know, like, it's iconic. I went there one day to try it, and, like, I guess my board zoomed. It went underneath a motorbike wheel, and I kind of got fixed. Um, but then the day that I actually did it was the same day that he the switch flip, and we. I, I guess he woke up early and, and just went there. You know, we we were just skating. Like I guess you see in the in the in the, in the start titles that you know, like uh, do a Japan down and he does a 180 or whatever. And I guess like you know, we were just warming up for ages. Like he, Nick, we kept doing like kickflips. Like I was doing kickflips and Nick was doing switch hollows and we're just doing it back to back or whatever. And then I don't know. Aside from that, I guess it just happened. Can't was it fast, McGee? Can you remember, London? Uh, what's the first? Um, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was, I think it's fairly fast. I think like once you start, it was really windy. I think it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. I, I think it's windy. Jarvis Cocker was there. I think after Jarvis rolled yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jarvis Cal rolled up. After Jarvis, Jarvis rolled up, Cocker. I stoked and I guess I put him down. I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You do, you do. He's, like, in, the, in the footage, Jarvis Cocker was looking and he and he and he crossed the street and then uh, he yeah. put it down not long after that. Twenty years of that. Twenty years. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's been like twenty years ago, does it really? No. This, 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 this is a bit where we say twenty years. Everyone has to lift up the hat now. Shut. That's a good idea, actually. Oh, Whoa, look at that. Done. Great. Born. Yeah, any great. Born. Oh, got the hair. Yeah, still there. Everyone has to lift up their hat, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like our Born's got Rob Selly's chain now, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> <laughs> the same, mate, you know? Same one from first broadcast. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dudes, yeah. cool. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks very much for thanks that. Thanks a lot for yeah. amazing. Thanks, guys. It's amazing. Fun. All right, nice chat. Uh, mate. I hope we nailed it. Give it a couple Hopefully of years. Hopefully, I see you somewhere here. You know what I'm saying? Merry no Christmas. Point. Christmas. See you in the next 20 years, right? <laughs>
pretending to film it. So, <laughs> so he's like basically going to blag it that he has filmed and just try and lie about it somehow. I wish I'd do that. No, but, 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 or, or he's like being really considerate and being like, oh, if I get up and be like, look like a fuck in the footage, <laughs> I'll spoil the long run shot. So either way, I'm like, kind of like, oh. He acted, it, he acted out, that's good. But either, I'm kind of like. Method acting. Respect for being, trying to be such a bullshitter that he would actually try and bullshit it, or double respect for actually just being like, I'll just, I'll just I'm, I'm being really professional and just pretend that I'm shooting it so it looks good in the other shot. So either God, way. I want to kill the vibe, man. Either way, he did. He did, he did the I'm job. sure McGee said he wasn't that bothered about it, but now he really is. <laughs> no, I'm saying got, he, got, either, either, way, it, you know either way, either way, either way, I did do did, did a good job because he was professional about the way he looked. But also, <laughs> he kind of gets respect for being like the ultimate bullshitter. You know what I mean? To try and actually pretend to get away with something that he could never get away with. <laughs> I think Dan was more bummed than I was. Like, no, I wasn't. I was, no, I wasn't. I wasn't because bear in mind this is a day when I would go fucking absolutely wild. I remember everyone's like, oh my God, he did it. He fucking did it. And everyone's like, so on a high. And I was like, did you get it? And one of them was like this. No. <laughs> but like, everyone was so stoked. And I knew that I got it because I remember panning away and I, I didn't even know that that perpetual sign was there. Or I can't remember, maybe I did. But I can, I can rem- I remember getting it and getting it with a perfect pan away. I was like, I fucking got it. Are you thinking of doing one for uh, Waiting for the World? Like, is Scott Palmer really going to get on a Zoom call? Like, stuff like that. It's like, I don't know how. He would, yeah, he would do. He would 100%. Would he? Fuck yeah, he would. Scott loves all this shit. He has a different life now that's fucking so far away from skating. But, like, yeah, definitely. Kind of that's, that's a perspective that I think a lot of people are interested in. Now. I mean, that would be yeah. amazing. I was messaging with Andreas Hawkwind as well the other day. Oh, yes, really? that would be sick. Waiting for the World one would be sick because there's quite a few people that could pitch in, eh?